الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله ذي الملك والملكوت ذي العزة والجبروت الحمد لله حي قيوم لا ينام عزيز لا يضام قهار لا يرام وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما يقول الباري سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون or you who believe, fear Allah as it should be feared, and they not accept on a state of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, bestow upon us the gift of dying on a state of Islam. Allahumma ameen, ya Rabbil Alam. Amma ba'd, yaqulu Rabbul Izzati subhanahu wa ta'ala fi surat al-Baqarah, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لا إكراه في الدين قد تبين الرشد من الغي. الله سبحانه وتعالى سيد سورة البقرة right after آية الكرسي لا إكراه في الدين no one is forced and there is no compulsion in the deen of Allah سبحانه وتعالى قال قد تبين الرشد من الغي. now it's very distant it's very clear the difference between a rushd, the guidance, a rushd, the way of the truth, wal ghayyu is the way, the deviated way, the crooked way, the way that Allah called the way of the taghut. فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى Whoever who disbelieves in a taghut and believes in Allah, he had held fast to the most trustworthy handhold. It's like something holding on something that he trusts, something that is going to help him. So the Al-Urwatul Wuthqa, it is the path to salvation, it is the path to the success, it is the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads you to such success. There is no other way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قَدْ تَبَيَّنَ الرُّجْدُ مِنَ الْغَيْنِ it's very clear. It had made me very clear the distinction between the good and the bad, the truth and the falsehood. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Who alladhi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa deen al-haq, the one who sent his messenger with the huda with the guidance and the religion of the truth, liyudhirahu ala deeni kullihi, to make it be manifest on all the other faith and the deen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us in his book that the principle of this deen the principle of the Sharia is the truth. And it is the truth by the fact that he has all the evidence as being laid down and fully detailed in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the son of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As he said, this is the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is manifest and they wish to extinguish the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their mouths, with what they say, with their plot, with their cunning. But Allah is going to fulfill his light. And one of the scholars said a beautiful example and parable. Imagine someone in the midday turning to the sun, blowing to the sun, trying to extinguish the light of the sun. That's exactly those who want to stop the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the light of the guidance, the light which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala detailed, detailed in the book, in his book, Al Quran, and the light that the Prophet sallallahu had conveyed. Now, when we Thinking about such a thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qad faqad faman istamsaka. So there is an action here, is to hold fast to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So holding fast, what does it mean to hold fast to this strong rope, to this trustworthy hand hold? To hold fast to such a thing is to hold fast to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To hold fast to the way of Allah, to the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qal, وَمَنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى The meaning of holding fast to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to this urwa that Allah mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah is indeed to submit to Allah whoever who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and acting in a way of ihsan, of goodness, 
then he's the one who istamsak bil urwat al wuthqa he's the one who indeed made the action made himself or herself to be holding fast to this urwat al wuthqa and he said in the other ayah qala fastamsak bil ladhi uhya ilayk he ordered the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to hold fast to hold strongly to the to what i have revealed to you to what has been revealed to you and in other ayah in surah al araf Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said qala wal ladina yumassikuna bil kitabi wa aqamu as-salah those who hold fast to the book and they establish the prayer as a result of holding fast and continuing on the path of the uh, guidance to safeguard it and maintain it those are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said those who are muslihun those who correct those who do good those who are seeking to help this whole universe come to find that state of well-being wallahu la yudhiu ajra al-muslihin subhanahu wa ta'ala now Here in this ayah, there is an action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described. So we understand first. Then, Wallah khal may yakfur but tawud, whoever who disbelieve in the tawud. So what is the tawud? The tawud is at the companion of the one Allah ta'ala alayhim, they used to, when they, you know, talk, talk in, in, uh, talking about the tawud, they imply for the uh, idols that has been worshipped by the people of Quraysh. But the tawud in the language, everything that went overboard. So, here is meaning the tawud, anything that corrupts the way of the truth, that leads astray. So, a tawud, whatever, ever bored, like arrogance, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, forging lies, uh, doing, subhanallah, fighting in the sake of the shaitan and so on, this is the tawud. So, anything, such a thing, as comes is an action, a continuous action, someone has to remove it from his soul. And then invite and bring the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But someone say, actually I believe in Allah. I said, it's not that. Believing in Allah is a continuous action. Is a continuous striving. As removing the illness from your heart. Removing the, 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 the ta'ud. So this is a continuous action that the believer has to do. If he does not do such a thing, then... He will be a prey to the system around to take away that Iman from you. Because it is a fact that the Iman in your heart, as we have said, and all of you know, it's a guest into your heart. If you do not maintain it, if you do not safeguard it, and if you do not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this guidance, Allah will take, take it away from you. It's not going to be there because... It will not be competing with the falsehood that you have invited from the love of this worldly life. It will not. Now, when we think about such an action as a necessary or as a necessity for the believer, he has always to be aware, to be always into action, removing, combating, fighting the illness within his system to get it out. So to have that, uh, you know, fada'al, virtue, values, Iman dwelling into his system. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he ordered the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Take from their wealth a sadaqa. And the sadaqa as a token, as, as evidence, as, as a proof, and as helping them to look, to do verb, to tahiruhum wa tuzakkihum. At tahara to hear kind of imply as cleansing the illness into the system. What Tazkiyah is a purification kind of imply to bring and have dwell the virtue, the good morality, and the hasana, the good deeds into your system. So this is an action that need to be done daily, continuously by every believer seeking the, the success in this life and the hereafter. If you can say in another term, like building for yourself a fortress. Because if you do not build this fortress, then what is going to happen? We go on in no time losing our identity, blinding, causing the blindness to our insight, and lose our iman. It's a fact. It's a reality. You can see it from many people who are Muslim, but they really lost into the society, lost in their journey of life. It's a fact. It's a reality. It's not something that you know uh, someone is say oh this person is bad it's not a question of being evil or not it's a question if you do not be active into your life to build this fortress then 
whoever, subhanAllah, whatever level of knowledge a person can come to, whatever level of piety a person can attain, if we do not build this fortress and work daily, every day, every moment to work on it, to keep it and safeguard it, then we're going to lose ourselves. It's a fact. Now, living in this society, there is, you know, of all what we are encountering or what we are facing from all, subhanAllah, these changes in the world. We can divide it in two type of voices, two type of call, two type of movement that is really going against your own identity, going against your iman. It's these two movements trying in a new way to steal the iman, to take the iman from your system, to turn you into different person. The first movement or the first call or the first way is the way leading astray. The second way is the way that terrorize you, scare you, fear you. The first way, you can see it, subhanAllah, in this, all the slogans that they are calling for to be joined. And now the problem here is that the use of term of great value, of great virtue. We're talking about justice, we're talking about equality. We're talking about, you know, uh, fighting, you know, inequality, standing against racism. All of those are great noble virtue. However, what, how they clothe it, they didn't clothe it with the truth. They clothe it with the batil, with falsehood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, and he was addressing to the people of Musa, قال, وَلَا تَلْبِسُوا الْحَقَّ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَتَكْتُمُوا الْحَقَّ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Do not clothe the, the, the falsehood with the truth, which is like, looks like the truth, but it's not. And in the other ayah, Surah Fatir, قَالَ أَفَمَنْ زُنِّنَ لَهُ سُوءُ عَمَلِهِ فَرَآهُ حَسَنًا is like the one that he's been lured to see his ill deeds turn into good deeds. They're not good deeds. He sees them. It appears to them that they are good deeds. Why? Because their insight has been blinded. So the believer, seeing such a thing, he might use the virtue of the greatness and noble virtue that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in his Quran and the Prophet sallallahu called to them as names without meaning. So people, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for the, this idol, they give them name and they give them attributes of the world lordship. But these names, this idol, they, they do not exist. They don't have anything. The same thing when you use, for example, justice, but when you work under the name of a justice, when you do things that oppose the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what impact will have on you? You go change the perception which is going to like enforce or force the interpretation of the Qur'an to what you have adhered to into the society. Therefore, when you're talking about equality, you're thinking about the equality that they think about the gender issue and things and things and so on without, you know, enter in details. You know what I'm talking about. So here this da'wah, how can you protect yourself? How can you call for justice and stand for justice with either justice that Allah describes in the Qur'an? How can you call for the equality and stand for the equality, the equality that the Prophet Sallallahu stand for, called for and had achieved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? These terms, as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, these are defined in the way of Allah. So it's not the name that should lure you to have you as a Muslim run and stand for it. It is the meaning, the purpose, how it stands, what basis and principle this whole justice that we are talking about in the society is standing on. If it's not the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, therefore you are transgressing yourself if you adhere to it. And this is true call that we live every day and you see it subhanAllah in the media, in the social media, in the, in the, uh, in the art, in the movies, everywhere it's a worldwide culture. It's becoming a worldwide culture. So if you do not build this fortress, then slowly you're going to lose your perception which give you the difference between the good and the evil and then will be defined to you by an outside system, an outsider system from your way. The second dawah is the second dawah of takhweef. You know, people with, the, with this campaign and movement of the Islamophobia make the believers or the Muslims to be like scared. 
And this is, subhanAllah, how the way, how to stand against this. How can you secure yourself? How can you feel safe in this situation? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's in the system that Allah defined the Qur'an. But unfortunately, many of us, they are standing and trying to stop it without looking what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defined for us, described for us, how the Prophet sallallahu did it in the Qur'an. So to keep ourselves having a sound identity, strong heart, pure soul, and standing for the justice that is a justice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called to his prophet, إِنَّمَا ذَلِكُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ يُخَوِّفُ أَوْلِيَاءَ That the shaitan who make you to scare and fear his partisans, his parties. Do not fear them if you are true believers. Now, what is the, the path, the way, the practical path? How can we do that? How can we, in continuous action, striving to remove this illness from our heart, to protect our identity, to protect ourselves? And in the same time, you know, trying to add the iman in our heart. Because you say, I have iman. He said, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he addressed to the Prophet and the companion, he said, all you will believe, believe in Allah. Ya ayu ladhira amanu, aminu billahi wa rasooli wa al-kitab al-ladhi nazzala ala rasooli wa al-kitab al-ladhi anzala maqabli. In Surah An-Nisa, if Allah addressing to the believer to believe, it's not because they, they don't have belief how the Prophet Sallallahu would be addressed with such a thing. So the interpretation, the meaning of it is that continue because the belief and it is the taqwa is a continuous action. It's a continuous action. It does not stop. And you act for it. When you stand every day to, uh, to, to pray, when you listen to the adhan and you rush to the prayer, that is the iman billah. That you are proving to yourself that you believe in Allah, maintaining your iman, safeguarding your soul, helping yourself to be on the right path. So what is the practical way to protect ourselves, to build this hassan from not be, subhanAllah, in and when contaminated, to have our perception, to not be brainwashed, to think that we are doing good, and then we are lured. And then when you come in the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to tell you like those people who lost their deeds thinking that they are doing good. قَالَ قُلْ هَلُوَ نَبِيُّكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ أَعْمَالَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَّ سَعِيُّمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يُحْسِنُونَ صُنْعًا Those are the most astray, those who work very hard and they think that they do great. But actually they went astray from a long time ago. When it comes to the Day of Judgment, they are full bankrupt. They do not have anything. And we don't want that. And it is a natural thing. It is a natural effect. If we live into the society and you do not stand and will be aware of such a thing, your iman goes away. It's not because we are bad. It's natural. If we have a device, if you don't charge it and it's out of charge, you cannot use it. That's how the heart, if you do not keep charging the heart and the soul, then is going to subhanallah out of of charge then that's it you are out of iman so the practical way is to complete to do what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said which is takhliya wa tahliya to remove to empty from the illness and to subhanallah pour the goodness into your system in a practical way it's done according to a divine law what is this divine law because when people, they want to plan on how to, you know, change things, how to stand for the chance, for the good chance. Usually, they are inspired by what people are doing in the society. As a believer, you have to take your way from the book of Allah. Why from the book of Allah? Because he's the most merciful. He is the all-knowing. He's the one who guides you. He's the one who created you. So he only tells you things that is going to help you. So if I inspire from other things, not because I hate those people, no. Because that system, nothing have to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who do you trust? Allah or the system or the scientists or anybody else. You said I trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most. Then get your path from the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, the Sunnah ilahi, قُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلُ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهَوْقُ There is an equation, a divine equation. Say the truth has come. And when the truth comes, the falsehood perish. The falsehood disappear. 
is the nature of the falsehood to perish. What does it mean? The falsehood, subhanAllah, it's like the weeds. It goes everywhere, but it doesn't have roots. It does not give life. It does not give any benefit. It only kills everything around it. But when you plant something that is giving you the fruit, that is the truth. So when you think this way, the only task that you have to do as a first stage in your life is to build the truth inside you. Is to build the truth. Because when you build the truth inside you and this truth spreads in all your system, falsehood disappears, cannot stand, cannot stay. It perishes by nature. So the way of the Qur'an, the way of the Prophet ﷺ is not to fight falsehood. It's to revive what is good in you. It's to build the truth in you. That is the way of the Qur'an. Then, enjoining good and forbid evil comes after that. Because if you do the enjoining good and want to change into the society without having, you know, constructed the truth inside you, then you're going to be alienated, you're going to be submitted to other system. you're thinking that you're fighting for justice and you find yourself, you look in the Quran and you say, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did for this, uh, the people of Lut and me trying to call for this equality and call it justice how can I make interpretation, how can I subhanAllah, pass such a thing and say still I'm doing good, no you're not doing good you being deluded. You being someone who really, you know, blinded your insight. You're still reading the Quran and you're trying to find an interpretation. It's, it's obvious. It's manifest. That's why if you don't build the truth, or what it means build the truth, it's like the first action is to build the connection with Allah. To cleanse yourself. To purify yourself. The more you purify yourself, the more you will hate disbelief, the more you hate obscenity, the more you can see what is wrong is wrong. Because now when we are confused inside, when we have a lot of things inside, we adhere to other things. And as you see it in the system education, as many of the mother and the father that can share with you what they teach to your own kids, you will see that is very far from Islam. We might be saying, oh, what they're saying about the Muslim. But the worst thing is not what they say about the Muslim in some of the textbook. is what they say about Allah that you don't see. Because Allah is taken away. Allah is erased from the whole system of education. So if we do not have the hasan, how are you going to protect yourself? How are you going to protect your child? How are you going to protect your community? It's impossible. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us in the Quran. The people of Quraysh are terrorizing and are threatening the Prophet ﷺ to drive him, to evict him out. They want to like intimidate you, they want to push you, to evict you from your own home. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to his Prophet, what he going to do? He's going to go and make a strike and a march and everything. Which is, it might be good when it's done in its roots with its own principle. After doing these steps that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in the Quran. What Allah said to his Prophet. He said, Build the truth within you. Make the relation of Allah. Gain the benefit to have Allah with you. Then you are the most powerful. That's how we start. That's how we build it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to his prophet, do not face them. Do not get the sword and go fight them. Do not even talk to them now. Just go to the prayer. Aqim salata Build the prayer. Establish a prayer. From the decline of the sun to the, to the ghasaq of the layl, to the eclipse or to the, to the dark of the night. And he said, وَقُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ إِنَّ قُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ كَانَ مَشْهُودًا And the recitation of the Qur'an in the time of the Fajr, that will be witnessing for you. How can we be an Ummah going to try to change and stand for equality and stand for justice when you do not even stand in the Fajr and listen to yourself recite the Qur'an? Well, that's a fact. 
If we didn't build ourselves from inside, how can be a good example or role model or talking about the truth? The Quran of the Fajr is going to stand and the angel witness that you have been praying Fajr and reciting the Quran. This is one ayah. So if I want to be like people of Aslah, you want to correct, you want to bring this well-being to this community at large, ask yourself, what are you in time of Fajr? And not only what are you in the time of Fajr, how much you have tasted the Quran of the Fajr. This is fact. So you see, people, they say, oh, this is a passive action. Are you telling me you want to stand for justice? I go around to my mihrab to pray. He says, that's what Allah told you. He's Al-Alim. He's the all-known. He's the one who telling you he can change everything by one word. But if you are down inside, if you don't have anything inside, if you are rotten inside, Allah already forget about you. So what we need to bring, bring the truth, build the truth, have to stand for the truth inside yourself first. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, says, and from the night, if you stand hours in the night, reciting and making tahajjid, then you are seeking something high, maqam mahmud. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you, he wants for you the highest of the position. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to his prophet after he told us in Surah Ghafir about the story of the one who was hiding his iman. He was has facing the tyranny of Fir'aun. And we have mentioned this great man many times it was in Surah Ghafir. And he said, and he did whatever he could. He was able to talk to them, to call them with evidence, to call them with the nature the natural disposition of the fitrah. Because when you're calling to Allah, you're not calling to something awkward. You're not to call to calling to something to compare it with science. You are calling to something that embedded in every cell, in every human being. You are calling to Allah, the creator of everything. So when he was calling to them and they denied and they were arrogant, he said, you will remember what I have told you. And I submit all my matters to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Thawaqahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shielded him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him. If you go farther and you read, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, here he's addressing to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa what he told him. He didn't say, now Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, take your, your companion and go do action. No, it was not the time. It was the time first to build the truth, to connect be patient. The, the promise of Allah is the promise of the truth. And what you do? And ask Allah for forgiveness. And celebrate the praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the morning and in the evening. Allah called the remembrance for those who really remember Allah. He said, they remember Allah standing sitting, laying down, that is our breathing if we all just know. It's not you making tasbih just to have some good deeds, you're making tasbih because that the air that your soul is required to breathe, that the soul is begging you every day to give it some food, to give it some air, it is the tasbih, it is the salah. How can we people who are able to change if we are dry inside, if we're almost like sick inside, if we're almost we're going to die. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to his prophet, we know that it hurt you deeply what they are saying to you. Did he say to write to them? Did he told them? Did he say to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, go fight them? No. Qala, we know that it hurt you. Then go praise your Lord. And be from those who make sujood and worship Allah till death will come to you. That's dear brother and respect your sister. The way of Allah is not a passive way. It's the most active way. It's the most relevant way. It's the most efficient way. Why? Because Allah is guiding you to it. Then afterward, go enjoy good and forbid evil. You're going to enjoy good and forbid evil based on the sunnah of Allah, on the divine law of Allah, on the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to his way and help us to build the fortress within ourselves by removing illness, 
and dwelling in our heart insha'Allah ta'ala the purity aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa kum fastaghfiru al-ghafur rahim bismillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiy al-mustafa amma ba'd Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help the believers to protect their peace their inner peace because when you hear all these people all these voices calling for justice and equality and things if you do not have this fortress not only us all our youth all our children as i have said you know uh, per the system of the education that how they they designed it we're going to be lost truly lost so dear brother respect to sister this is a necessity It's not something, an option we want to feel more khushu' in our salat. We want to increase our iman. It's a necessity. How much can you, subhanAllah, hold your breath? For how long? One minute if you can. So subhanAllah, we are taking, keeping the air for our soul for years. How can then be really longing to be the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we forget even to feed our soul with the most basic thing, with its air, which is nurture, nourishment, or nourish, uh, it's nourishment, which is the tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why when you come to a situation when you cannot make enjoying good, forbid evil on the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't do it. What should I do? And then Allah he said, take care of yourself. Keep your guidance. This is what he told us in Surah Al-Ma'idah. So he said, oh, there is a lot of things. He said, keep yourself. As long as you have the truth inside you, then you're going to be a lantern, like a minaret of light. You're going to help people. You're going to inspire. So be that source of inspiration by continuing to build the truth inside you. What is the greatest deed that truly make you the nearest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is in the same path. Because the more you come closer to Allah, the more you inject truth and remove illness, the closer you will be to Allah, the more truth, the more thing becomes clear into your eyes. When Al-Imam Abu Muslim al-Darani rahimahullah ta'ala was asked, قال يا إمام ما هو أعظم عمل يقرب العبد إلى الله What is the most, the greatest of the deeds that bring a person, a servant to Allah, the nearest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, as soon as he heard this question, he started to cry. Because the answer is related to his tears. The answer is related to someone he's attached to Allah. Connected with Allah, truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, the greatest of the deeds is when Allah looks at your heart, He will see that the greatest thing you're looking forward to have its pleasure is Allah. Dear brother, respected sister, we are in an hour, inshallah, accept Allah, accept our dua. So we ask Allah to purify our heart. But I'm going to ask you a question in this time. Look at your heart. If Allah is looking at your heart now, what he's going to see? He's going to see maybe the career is the greatest thing in your heart. Or the success of the children. Or to have a lot of money. Or, 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 and those are all halal. But what is the greatest thing in your heart? That is the greatest deed. If the greatest thing that you are hoping is Allah, then you are truly a great person. Then you are truly near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm saying it is the sa'a of dua, is a time of dua that Allah accepts your dua. Look at your heart and ask Allah to purify it. To make it the highest hope in due your heart is Allah. Allahumma tahir qulubana bil iman. Allahumma tahir qulubana min al nifaq. Wa ayunana min al khayana. Allahumma tahir qulubana min al nifaq. 
وأعيننا من الخيانة وأعمالنا من الرياء اللهم طهر قلوبنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم زينا بزينة الإيمان وجعلنا هداة مهتدين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة يرحمكم الله